<laughs> well, here we are on Mother's Day. Mother's Day can be tricky, unique, it can even be a little sensitive. There are some, when Mother's Day comes, they think, well, maybe I'll just stay home today. Because different thoughts come to people's minds on Mother's Day. For some, maybe it's the first year that mom is gone. Maybe for some, it's the first year that a mom is dealing with the loss of a child. Maybe it's a mom who has multiple children and she's concerned about them and she knows some things are not right and she's just been praying for them over and over. There's some moms that just have that one child and but still mom can not stop worrying and being concerned. There's others that for years, whatever the reason, there's been something that has stopped mother, daughter, son from getting together from something that's happened years ago. For some, Mother's Day is coming here today, sitting with your mother and going home and having some great food. Mother's Day means a lot of different things. It is a happy time, but for some, it's a difficult day. Maybe for a young lady who has been trying to have a child, and it just hasn't happened yet. Maybe other thoughts come to mind, and, and so Mother's Day just has a lot of emotions. And sometimes we just don't know what to do with those emotions. I read a story this week, and, and I just knew that when I read it, I knew this is what I would be preaching on today. But if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. Here's a mother going through some difficult times. She comes to God's man at that moment, or what we would call a prophet, because she needed advice. She needed some wisdom. And in our world today, don't we all need some wisdom? And so if you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, and I'd like to read the first seven verses. It's up on the screen as well. One of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, has died. You know that your servant feared the Lord. Now the creditors are coming to take my two children as his slaves. Elisha asked her, what can I do for you? Tell me, what, what do you have? Elisha said, what can I do for you? And he said, tell me what you have in the house. And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go out and borrow empty containers from all your neighbors. Do not get just a few. Then go in, shut the door behind you and your sons, and pour oil into all the containers. Set the full ones to one side. And so she left. And after, he had, after she had shut the door behind her, and her sons, they kept bringing her containers, and she kept pouring. And when they were full, she said to her son, bring me another container. But he replied, there aren't any more, Mom. Then the oil stopped. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons can live on the rest. Isn't that an amazing story? But as we think of that story, sometimes we all can relate to difficult times or times when we do not know what to do. 
Times when we are at wit's end. Can you imagine a widower? Two sons. The bill collectors are there at our door. And at the, in that day, Mosaic law prohibited her, prohibited her from declaring bankruptcy. So her only option was that her sons would have to pay the debt by going as slaves. Could you imagine thinking, is this all that I have? Is this the only thing that I can do is allow my two sons to go into slavery to pay the debts of their dad? And so what did she do? She went to the man of God. She went to the prophet of that day. The prophet of God at that moment was Elisha. And I can imagine as this woman came to Elisha with this situation, Elisha said, what can I do for you? And she told him. But she also shared, Elisha said, what do you have left at that house? And basically, what was she telling him? I have nothing. You ever feel like that? I have nothing left. But all she had was a jar of oil. You know, that is interesting. When I read that this week and I started thinking about that, you know, sometimes in life we're just like this in the sense that said, man, I don't have nothing. There's no way I can survive. But again, we are reminded of what God can do. Sometimes we think we have nothing for God to use, but over and over in the Bible we find where God can take what we think is nothing and do something great. Remember when Jesus was with his mom at a wedding? And you know, you know how moms sometimes ask you to do things? You go, Mom. Not now. You know, Mom, they don't want to hear me sing. You know, Mom, they don't want to hear me play the piano. You know, and, and so what did Jesus, Mom? Jesus, they're out of wine. And, you know, I, I know you can do it. And she walks off. You're like, you know, you know how moms do? And Jesus is looking. There are six empty jars. But what did Jesus do? He took those six empty jars and he told those people to put what? Water in them. And then he said, take a scoop, a cup, and bring it to the host and say, here. And when the host tasted it, it was the greatest wine of the evening. What did Jesus do? What did he take? What did he have? Six empty jars. But they made wine. Remember when Jesus and disciples were on the hillside and they were ministering to the people and they were sharing with them and, and, and some of the disciples had said to Jesus, you know, it's getting time to eat and, and we don't have enough money. There's not enough money here to even think about going to the town and buying enough food for all these people. And so what did Jesus say? Gather what's in the crowd. And you know this story. There were five loaves of bread two fishes. And what did Jesus do? What seemed to be what? Nothing. Seemed to be, well, this is not going to do. This is not enough to feed a multitude. But what did Jesus do? He took that parcel and he broke it, blessed it and broke it, and there was enough food to feed every person and there were baskets left over. The point is, can God do with what we think is nothing? You know, we are in a world today that, that, you know, we feel like we have nothing if we don't have all the things that other people have. We think we have nothing when we don't have the possessions or other things, but, but we need to see that we have so much. We have been blessed, and think about what God can use. Now, I, I, I just think that if God had told us, go take, go, go get jars. You know, I wonder if we would have even had the faith to say, 
to go get what? I don't have nothing. You want me to go get jars? Go get jars. Go borrow jars. Have the faith of doing that. Or I wonder, what if the wife would have said, but this jar of oil that I, that I have, my husband gave that to me. I, I, I don't want to give up the last thing that is his. She could have had those thoughts. We have those thoughts sometimes. Thank God, I, I would give up this, but I, I, I just need to hold on to it. You know, my wife comes to me sometimes and says, Frank, why are you holding on to this? I do have a lot of stuff. But don't we do that sometimes? We're holding on to things. But you know, God is saying here, if you give me what seems to be nothing, if you give me, I can do something. And we find that in this case, God allowed her to take her one jar of oil and she started pouring. And she filled up one jar, another jar. She poured some more. She poured some more. She poured into every jar that her children were able to bring to her. She filled them. And the jar she had was still full. She just kept pouring. And when did it stop? When the last jar that they had. Guys, I want us to see whatever we have this morning. I want you to know, you might think it's not, but it is enough for God to use for a good purpose. It is amazing what God can do. And this morning, as we think of Mother's Day, sometimes some of us don't know those times when mothers... They worried about she was going to have enough food to feed everybody. She worried about if there were going to be clothes and shoes. But many of them just kept on praying and knew God would provide. You see, we need to be reminded what God can do. You know, raising a family, <laughs> each family is different. Think about your kids. Maybe you got one. Maybe you got three. Maybe you got seven, six, five. Are they all the same? Larry, is your three the same? No, no. No. Pat, your two girls the same? Not even close, right? You would agree. <laughs> you know, and sometimes that's a good thing. But you think of... Think of your family. Think of your kids. Think of the needs. Think of the concerns you had. The, the, sometimes when you were on your knees saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose this child. I don't want to lose my family. God is saying, what do you have? Are you willing to give it to me and let me show you what I can do? Let me tell you. God is able to take the smallest and to use it to bless a family, to answer a call, to give that moment of relief when you needed it. God is able to move and to give us what we need. Can you imagine this woman, the relief that she felt? And then Elisha said, to her, go sell the oil, pay your debts. You and your sons can live on the rest. God provided. Today, raising kids, <laughs> is it easy? <laughs> no, it's not. It is not easy. And that's why we need to make sure that God is in our family. I know for parents that have been blessed and, and, and have seen each of their kids come to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, oh, what a blessing. I know there's other parents still praying for their children to come to that point. But we need to see today that God loves us. And if, you know, sometimes we think, well, you know, God can't, God can't do this for me because I have nothing. You're wrong. You're wrong. You've got something. 
that God can use for blessing. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you love us. You understand when families are hurting. Lord, may we see as a church, we have responsibilities to help parents raise their children. We have responsibility of being there for each other. Lord, may we see that what a blessing we have. Lord, each Sunday as we see the stage full of children, Lord, what a blessing. Lord, as we see them grow up, what a blessing. Lord, as we see them grow up and graduate, as we see them grow up and get married, we see them grow up and have children. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, may we see that sometimes it is hard, and we might think we have nothing, but Lord, we have you. And Lord, that we would never, never forget that we have you. Lord, be with us today in your son's name. Amen.